afternoon to one and all. Welcome to Law Seekho's thorough newspaper analysis for 15th and 16th of November 2023. Now, we'll be starting with the today's agenda of the day where we'll be talking about the editorial section, the Qatar death row and India's what India has options on this. We are taking from the Hindu today. Then we'll be talking about some interesting news update which will be related to the national and the international news. And lastly, we'll be speaking about some legal news update which is coming from the Honorable Supreme Court of India. Okay, let's go. editorial uh, section ki taraf chalte hai, where we'll be talking about the Qatar death row and what India as a country has options to protect them. So I hope this particular news you would have certainly read in the newspaper because it became headlines. But I'll give you the context behind this. Then on, that on October 26, Qatar local court handed down the death penalty to eight former Indian Navy officers. Dhyan rakhega, Indian Navy officers. And the case was guarded international attention. So our Indian Navy officers were given the death penalty. And why, why they were given and what India has options to protect them. So there was a similar incident that happened with the other uh, case also. The case shares similarities with other incidents involving the arrest of Indian nationals by foreign authorities. For instance, there was a very phenomenal case which made headlines in newspaper named Kulbhushan Jadav. An Indian national was sentenced to death in 2070 in Pakistan on charges of espionage and sabotage. Okay, Then Pakistan has accused him of acting at the behest of India's intelligence agency with Indian denial, which obviously India as a country denies. Now, the case was proceeded in a military court with no transparency at all, uh, because of which the Indian uh, government moved to the International Court of Justice, which found that Pakistan had breached one of the important article, which is Article 36 of Vene Convention, requiring immediate notification of an arrest to the National's Consulate. So, uh, Pakistan government has breached that particular article in the separate incident. There was an Indian commander, Abhinandan Varthaman aircraft was shot down by Pakistani fighter jet after he took down a Pakistani F-16 fighter jet. So, he was captured on the Pakistani side of line of control but was released about 60 hours later following intense back channel communications between India and Pakistan. So, there was a case of Kulbishan Jadav, there was a case of Abhinandan Vardhaman. In both the instances, in the particular scenario, the individuals involved were reluctant to disclose their identities, mirroring the present situation. India either mitigated their sentences or brought them back to their home country through diplomatic means. Now, in the particular case where the eight uh, former Indian Navy officers were given death uh, row sentences, what India has options in this particular scenario? India has the option to initiate legal appeal within the Qatari legal system. Now, espionage is legally defined as the act of collecting or transmitting confidential information or documents to a foreign state or its agent with the intent to harm Qatar national security or interest. So, it's a, uh, you know, it's an offense which is defined where you are leaking very important confidential information so that you can harm other countries' in interest and sovereignty. It is noteworthy that Qatar has not disclosed information about the verdict yet uh, and India can pursue a legal battle with the aim of reducing the sentence of imprisonment. So, you know, India can do that as well. Now, uh, when it comes to this particular scenario, in 2015, India and Qatar signed an agreement pertaining to the transfer of sentence person. And under this agreement, who are sentenced in Qadar have a choice to serve their prison sentence in their home country as well. Okay, so there was an option. Now the Vene Convention. So there was a Vene Convention which provides a framework for counselor relations between the foreign states. 
Now, when it comes to the international sphere here, the Convention Optional Protocol grants the international criminal justice compulsory jurisdiction over dispute arising from its interpretation or application. Now, the relationship which is there between India and Qatar has yielded significant economic ties. Qatar is the largest provider of liquefied natural gas to India. That's an important consideration which Indian government has. While India's defense collaboration with Qatar has been somewhat limited, it still offers an avenue for diplomatic agreement. The Indian community represents the largest expatriate group in Qatar. Moreover, a steady stream of Indian artists performs in Qatar at events organized by community association affiliated with the Indian Cultural Center. Now, uh, by harnessing this particular ties which we have with Qatar, New Delhi can exert pressure on Qatari government to adopt a more lenient approach towards the detained individual, potentially offering them some relief. So the way forward could be here is the numerous global human rights organization have been actively, you know, they are actively combating unlawful imprisonment, capital punishment and other violations of human rights. Amnesty International, for instance, has consistently championed uh, human rights on a global scale. These organizations are also have a potential to mobilize and advocate for Indian Navy officers who are facing death penalty. So various international organizations are also there who are combating against this, you know, strict punishments and death penalty and capital punishment. Now, the conclusion here that we need to talk about is that this is a very challenging diplomatic issue that requires very careful consideration and very strategic action here. Now, we need to look upon here as a person where India's response should take into account the implications of the international convention that is Vene on Councillor Relations, international precedents and the border context of india Qatar relation. Whether through diplomatic dialogues, political intervention, legal appeal or a blend of the strategies, India has the potential to seek a resolution on this particular matter. If we go up to the international higher domain where we talk about it and uh, you can have very strict challenging diplomatic issues, but it will certainly be minimized by very good strategic action so this was all about the editorial i hope you would have read this particular news in the uh you know um, newspaper where uh when the verdict was released various international organization came up front against this particular death penalty and the judgment let's hope for the best that we bring our indian navy officers back to our country and uh, let us start with the national news of the day which uh, is coming from SIDBI, that is Small Industrial Development Bank of India, launches MSME Economic Activity Index with Jakarta. So the uh, SIDBI bank has partnered with Jakarta, a digital lending transformation platform to launch an initiative named Sampurna, a unique MSMP economic activity index. So they have, you know, have partnered with Jakota, who is a digital lending transformation platform for MSME economic activity index. Now, what is this index all about? So the index uh, aims to provide a real-time snapshot of India's vital MSME sector, which contributes significantly to the country's gross value added and export. So it's it, 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 it would certainly deal with the contribution of the country to the gross value added and export. The index, which relies on the monthly sales data obtained from goods and service tax network returns of credit-seeking MSMEs. So this is a particular partnering that has happened. Now, the next, uh, you know, coming news of the sports where we talked about India finish Asian Archery Championship in Bangkok with seven medal comprising three golds and uh, three bronze and a silver. So India has won seven medals with three gold, three bronze and one silver. On the final day, India won five medal in compound event including three gold. In a women's team final, Jyoti Surekha Vennam Parneet Kaur and Aditi Gopichan Swami defeated Chinese Taipei in a thrilling context to win the yellow medal. 
ओके सो इंडिया हैज वॉन देयर सेकंड गोल्ड मेडल ऑफ द डे आफ्टर स्वामी एंड प्रियांश बीट थाईलैंड इन द फाइनल ऑफ द मिक्स टीम इवेंट सो इंडिया हैज वॉन अ वेरी गुड स्कोर विद द मेडल लिस्ट इन द एशियन आर्चरी चैंपियनशिप चले द नेक्स्ट नेशनल न्यूज की तरफ हम बढ़ते हैं जहां पे वील बी टॉकिंग अबाउट न्यू रूल्स कर्टेल ऑटोनॉमी ऑफ आई एम प्रेसिडेंट बिकम विजिटर सो दे आर वेरी अमेंडमेंट दैट इज हैपन इन द रूल्स ऑफ आई एम वेयर द प्रेसिडेंट विल नाउ फंक्शन एज अ विजिटर एट ऑल आई एम अक्रॉस द कंट्री this newly assigned role bestows significant power upon the president which includes the authority to appoint the chairperson of the board of governors the directors and the power to dissolve the board for failure to perform their duties accordingly in addition to this the rule further clarify that the visitor may by order dissolve the board and appoint a person or persons as a chairperson and members of an interim board for such period not exceeding 6 months to exercise powers and discharge functions under the act so this is particular related to the autonomy of iim where president has been appointed as a visitor okay chale next national news ki taraf chalte hain india ranked 117th among 129 nations in inclusiveness index by us varsity So India की ranking है 117th out of 129 country and this particular index has been published by Othering and Belonging Institute at California University US. Smaller countries like Bangladesh and Israel were placed better than India, where Bangladesh ranked 106th and Israel ranked 115th. Now, what about the New Zealand has finished the first in the index for the second consecutive year? Portugal recorded its best showing by securing second place, followed by the Netherlands in the third place. So, first number is New Zealand, second is Portugal, third is Netherlands, and India ki ranking rahi 117th out of 129 nation. And this particular index was published by Othering and Belonging Institute. Institute ke dwara. ठीक है, चले. Next national news ki taraf chalte hain. Air gun. सुरेंदर अभियान इनिशिएटिव सिलेक्टेड टू प्रेजेंट इन यूनेस्को इंटरनेशनल कॉन्फ्रेंस सो एयरगन सुरेंदर अभियान इनिशिएटिव ऑफ अरुणाचल प्रदेश गवर्नमेंट हैज बीन सिलेक्टेड एज इंडिया बेस्ट सक्सेस स्टोरी ऑन वाइल्ड लाइफ कंजर्वेशन टू प्रेजेंट इन यूनेस्को इंटरनेशनल कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑन बायोस्फियर रिजर्व हेल्ड एट मलेशिया Now, ये पर्टिकुलर इनिशिएटिव इज अ इनिशिएटिव ऑफ डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एनवायरमेंट फॉरेस्ट एंड क्लाइमेट चेंज ऑफ द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट अंडर द स्कीम पीपल वर इन्वाइटेड टू वॉलेंटरली सरेंडर देयर एयर गन्स एंड लाइसेंस गन्स to stop the use of this guns to kill bird and other wild animals so ye particular initiative ka ye kaam tha aur this has been selected to present in the unesco's international conference theek hai chale meghalaya launches food security campaign to achieve zero hunger so the department of food civil supplies and consumer affairs in meghalaya has launched a food security campaign which focuses on sensitizing the public about the national food security act and strives to achieve sustainable development goals zero hunger the campaign was launched by minister in charge comingon gemong at the shillong now what is this campaign all about to streamline registration and services by encouraging the public to see their aadhar card and registered mobile number with their ration card the process will enable the ration card holding family to obtain maximum benefit from the department so ye campaign kaha launch kara gaya meghalaya mein ye yaad rakhiyega meghalaya mein ab west bengal advocate general somendra nath mukherjee resign so west bengal advocate general somendra nath mukherjee mailed his resignation to governor cb anand bose Mukherjee was appointed as the Advocate General after Kishore Dutta resigned from his post in September 2021. He is the son of Satya Brata Mukherjee, who was the BJP Minister in former Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee government. So, उनके जो father थे, he was a BJP Minister named Satya Brata Mukherjee. 
and he has resigned seeking his resignation to the governor C. V. Anand Bose. ठीक है? चलें. Real Admiral Rajesh Dhankar takes over command of Eastern Fleet. So Real Admiral Rajesh Dhankar took over command of the Eastern Fleet, the sword arm of Eastern Naval Command, from Real Admiral Gurcharan Singh. The change of guard took place at an impressive ceremony held at Naval Dockyard, Vishakhapatnam. Over the past eleven months, the Eastern Fleet. Under the command of Real Admiral Gurcharan Singh has maintained a very high level of combat readiness and operation tempo and participated in various mission-based and operational deployment and several bilateral and multilateral engagement with friendly foreign navies. So, now Eastern Fleet ki command is ke paas hai? Real Admiral Rajesh Dhankar ji ke paas. चलिए अब इंटरनेशनल न्यूज की तरफ चलते हैं जहां पे यूके प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऋषि सुनक सैक्ट इंडियन ओरिजिन सुलेला ब्रेवरमैन सो सुलेला ब्रेवरमैन हैज बीन सेट टॉइस फ्रॉम द यूके कैबिनेट इन जस्ट ओवर अ ईयर शी ऑफन ग्रैब्ड हेडलाइंस फॉर अ प्रो एक्टिव कमेंट्स ऑन माइग्रेंट्स पुलिस एंड होमलेस Suela Braverman is a Conservative Party MP for Fareham in North in South East England. She succeeded fellow Indian origin colleague Preeti Patel in the cabinet as Home Secretary. Braverman previously served as Attorney General in the Boris Johnson-led government and was among the first contender to replace Johnson as Prime Minister. So he has been sacked. Report has been suggested that. UK PM was undergoing pressure from opposition lawmaker and members of his own ruling Conservative Party to fire braver men. She has faced a barrage of criticism during her tenure for using words such as hurricane of illegal migrant and she wanted to deport them to Rwanda. So this is something allegation and due to which she was being sacked twice. Now, 33rd conference of WOAH, Regional Commission for Asia and Pacific, this meeting held for the purpose of examining animal health, animal welfare and animal protection food safety issues within the region and to elaborate recommendations in accordance with WAOH general rules. Okay? Now, the challenges which were being posted by COVID-19 pandemic emphasize the crucial role of scientific expertise in assessing risk at human-animal environmental interface. So, this was the risk. It underscores the necessity to enhance resilience and capacity in veterinary services for future challenges. It is anticipated to be a week of fostering valuable discussion and building essential networking relationships. So, it is a 33rd conference that has been held. Now, India-US hold 2 plus 2 ministerial dialogue. US delegation at the 2 plus 2 ministerial talks was led by US Secretary of State Antony Blinken and US Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin. The US affirmed its continued support for India's permanent membership in a reformed UNSC and again extended welcome to India's candidature for UNSC non-permanent seat in 2028 and 2029. The US looks forward to hosting the next 2 plus 2 ministerial meeting. So this has been held and it's a very important meeting between US and India. Uh, Next national news ki taraf chalte hai, where we are talking about uh, some news coming from sports. ICC suspend Sri Lanka with immediate effect. So Sri Lankan um, Ministry of Sport dismissed SLC's board and replaced it with an interim committee following the country's poor performance at this year's World Cup. But the sacking was stayed by Sri Lanka's Court of Appeal. The Sri Lankan men's team had an unforgettable time at ICC Men's Cricket World Cup 2023, winning just two of their nine matches and finishing with four points. Sri Lanka is scheduled to host ICC Under-19 Men's Cricket World Cup across January and February 2024. Now, coming up to the next international news of the day, US-South Korea deal can deter the North Korean nuclear threat. 
So South Korea and the United States during talks on Monday revised a bilateral security agreement aimed at deterring North Korea's advancing nuclear and missile threats. The revision was considered necessary because the existing strategy did not adequately address rapid advancements in North Korea's missile and nuclear programs. The strategy which holds the United States will use tra strategic military assets, including nuclear forces to defend its allies, has taken on a greater significance as North Korea pushes ahead with its ballistic missile and nuclear program. So US and South Korea deal can deter North Korean nuclear threats as well. Now, the legal update which is coming from the Supreme Court which has commuted the death sentence in the case of Madan versus state of Uttar Pradesh, where past conduct not always a factor when imposing death penalty. So last week, Supreme Court set aside the death sentence of a man accused along with others of firing on and killing multiple people over suspected political enmity in Uttar Pradesh, Muzaffar Nagar, observing that Although the crime fell in the rarest of rare category, the death row convict was not beyond reformation. His recidivism had factored in with the confirming court since he had earlier been convicted in another murder case. But the top court held that past conduct does not necessarily have to be taken into consideration while imposing a death penalty particularly when the commutation of the sentence of other accused persons but not his would lead to a anomalous situation. So, uh, this was being commuted to death sentence and the case is Madan versus state of Uttar Pradesh. The next legal update coming from the Jammu and Kashmir High Court where Order 20 Rule 16 CPC se related hai, in which not mandatory to pass preliminary decree in every suit for accounts. So the court has stated that it is not mandated to pass a preliminary decree before a final decree in every suit of accounts. Instead, the decision depends upon the unique facts and circumstances of each case. And the case name is Executive Engineer Dull Lake Division versus Mosvi Industrious Budgam. I hope it helped you a lot. Now that's all for the today's news update and the legal news. Thank you for watching and take care. And a very big announcement that is coming. We are conducting DGS mock test series in which we are offering to students marathons, mock test series, as well as quizzes. For today, we have a quiz on CPC at 7 o'clock YouTube live. Do watch our channel for playing the interesting interesting quiz coming ahead. Take care and thank you.